In this video I'm going to repair a piece of balcony railing which I made 17 years ago. Of this repair I only have images and no video clips so this video is going to be a, in a different style. I hope you still like it. In the summer of 1999 I had made this piece of railing for the balcony of my parents house together with some more of them and this piece uh, got broken over the years because I had made one mistake when I made it. The wood ran short and I had put together this frame from two shorter pieces with this glue joint in the middle. Um, there's actually two dowels in there as well but of course the glue joint didn't hold up very well to now 17 years of weathering. So um, on this piece um, the wood had got very rotten you can see it here and in even more detail here so there was only one way of keeping this piece of railing um, by replacing this frame and that's what I was going to do and that's what I'm going to show in this video I first analyzed what possibilities I had to take off this frame and to replace it and I remembered and then realized when I looked at it that I had put together the railing with mortise and tenon joint and that joint got reinforced with screws which hide behind those plugs. And on top of that there are small nails which connect this frame which is the broken one to the slanted boards on the face of the railing. So these three um, I had to remove to actually take the frame away and replace it with a new one. I first used a cheap and old forcing bit to drill out those plugs. Cheap and old because I didn't have an idea how far in the screws were so it was almost inevitable that I'd drill in through the screw heads and of course I didn't want to ruin a good forcing bit with that. This process revealed the screw heads. You can't see them very well in here, but here they are. And I tried the screwdriver, but of course the screws are very corroded at this point. Um, there was no way of getting them out with a screwdriver. So the next thing I tried was to cut in there with a handsaw. Um, I made sure I didn't cut in too deep. You can see the pencil line that I drew here. Um, that's the maximum depth I was going to be able to cut without damaging these boards. And this sawing in enabled me to take an old chisel and remove the wood around the screw so that I could actually get more easily to the screw heads. The idea was to take some combination pliers, grab them very tightly and then try to turn them out. This didn't work very well. I tried some oil which helped a bit. I was able to get out one of them, but the other four, the other three screws still set too tightly. So the next idea I had was to take a file and to file down the screw heads so that they had two parallel sides, which you can see here. And after doing this, I was able to take a water pump wrench grab them um, with those two parallel sides and with the long lever that you have with this water pump wrench I was able to carefully draw out those screws. You have to be very careful because with that wrench you have so much force that you can actually share off the screw heads so you have to be really careful if you do that but it worked alright I got all the screws out. After that it was more sawing just to weaken that frame so that I could take it apart in pieces. And while I was doing that, I also took an old chisel and cut off those little nails just by hammering the chisel in between the frame here and this board so that the whole frame got loose, the middle part of it got loose and I could remove it. That's the result at this point. The middle part is removed and the end part is still there, so I could work on this one now. 
it was some more chiseling um, to get this off. I made sure that all the remaining wood pieces and um, glue rem remainders got cut off very cleanly with the chisel so that the remaining part of the wood was clean enough so that I could glue a new piece back on. Since the whole thing got very unstable at this point because this, this frame here was missing of course, I clamped a piece of scrap to it so that it got stable again and I could handle it easily without breaking it. I took a piece of the old frame and used it to adjust the table saw because I was going to cut a very large dado into it. I did this by placing saw cuts next to each other. First I did the outer two and then I did one cut next to the other until the whole dado has, well, was cut out. I cleaned it with a chisel because of course at the bottom there would still be some small pieces of wood and then it was time for the first dry fit and that actually went quite well. I had to do some little adjustment in the depth and in the width of the dado but all in all it fitted well. My replacement piece still was one centimeter too wide so I cut that to its proper width and I beveled the edges um, with the router on the long sides and with the block plane on the end grain so that it actually resembled more the look of the uh, existing piece. After some more dry fitting I could come to the glue up um, with waterproof glue and I made sure that there was plenty of glue on this joint so that it actually came out of the joint um, which ensures that the, the joint itself is filled with glue so that it's harder for water to get in. I then wanted to reinforce that joint again with screws like it had been before so I drilled another two holes on each side with a porcelain bit, put in some long screws and Pluck them up with those plugs to seal them off. I didn't get Douglas fir plugs but only spruce ones but since the whole piece would be painted with that color that it had been before um, that wouldn't make much of a difference. The last step was to attach the slanted boards to the piece I had put in. Um, this time I didn't use nails but screws and then the repair was finished. This is what it looks like. I think it fits in very well. It's going to get a new layer of paint of course. Um, the old pieces, the old parts are going to get painted again and the new replacement piece is going to get a couple of paint layers of course. And then there is no reason why it shouldn't last another 15 or even more years and I have to say this is one very rewarding aspect of being able um, of making things by hand is that you're also able to repair them and to give them new life um, and then that you are not forced to throw things out just because they are broken in one spot. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'm glad about a thumbs up. I'd appreciate a subscription if you don't have one yet. Remember that all the free stuff on the web is mostly supported by sharing and liking and giving positive feedback to the people who make it. So if you do that, you always motivate those people, including me, to make more free stuff that you can enjoy. So I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye bye.